Uh -uh Uh-uh-uh. Don't turn that dial. This is the right station if you want to hear the story of Jonathan Thomas and his Christmas on the moon. Now, of course, you remember about Jonathan Thomas, of how he went to the moon and made a promise. But in case you don't know what it's quite all about, so you won't have even the tiniest doubt, Jonathan Thomas and the man in the moon are searching for old Santa. And they must find him soon, for the wicked Squibbubliums who broke all the laws kidnapped poor old Santa Claus. And there can't be a Christmas at all this year without him. And you know the time draws near. Well, now, of course, you remember the wicked old witch who lives in the land of Rumpelstitch? Why, you'd think she was double. She's caused so much trouble to put to the test their very good friend, the good fairy queen, who's helped them no end. And the three little dwarfs who taught them to say the magical word of on squeen, on squeak, giggly vey, which helped them a lot, as far as they've got. Remember the queen gave them a charm to take, a magical acorn to keep them awake as they went through the nightmare forest so deep. And she said, remember, you can't go to sleep. And then they passed a dragon whose fiery breath nearly sent all of them right to their death. And then when they reached the forest so dark, a little white squirrel kind of just for a lark, named Whiskery Bill, why, he drove them quite mad, for he teased them and teased them, and that's always bad, till Jonathan Thomas fell off the horse, and he fell even further than that, of course, for without the magical acorn to keep, why, naturally, he fell very sound asleep, and nothing except a bright red rose could wake him up, and my goodness knows there wasn't a red rose anywhere to be had, and so Whiskery Bill, he felt pretty bad till the rose bush told that on the long rainbow he'd find some red rubies, and with them she could grow a red, red rose. And so he hurried and hurried, and was very much worried until he met a walrus, who said he'd go along and show him the way so he wouldn't go wrong. Well, they got the rubies with a great deal of trouble. As a matter of fact, their troubles were double, and the rose bush, so kind, said that she didn't mind if she worked after hours, to grow beautiful flowers, and she grew them a rose and kept her promise. And now we can wake up little Jonathan Thomas, that is, I hope, because on the way back, the ice on the river they were crossing went crack. And you'll have to admit it's a horrible sin, but Whiskery Bill and the walrus fell in. And, oh, but then here's where the story begins again. Keep afloat somehow or other, and I'll rescue you before you smother. Strike me pink, this water is wet, but never you mind, I'll save you yet. Here now, you ain't dead, but you will be if you don't climb up on my head. Well, hold me up until I get wet. Oh, my gracious, I'm soaking wet. Now then, up you go and have a care on top of me head. It's drier up there. Oh, I'm glad you're here. Because you're as good as a boat, and Jiminy Crickets, I can't even float. Well, of course, now, swimming is what all walruses are for. Come on, now, we'll strike out for the shore, and we'll get there fast without an itch. This was the doings of that wicked old witch. But never you mind, it won't take long. And we could pass the time if we sang a song. That suits me swell. I can manage to sing and hold on as well. Oh, swimming, swimming over the river wide. We're as wet as wet can be, but as dry as dry inside. So, swimming, swimming, this is the way it goes. Oyster mainsail, man the pumps. Yahoo, and there she blows. Oh, swimming, swimming over the river wide. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, magic mirror on the wall, speak and say what just before Whiskery Bill and his walrus friend. 
I see them both at the river's bend, O oh, mighty witch of Rumpelstead. That's very good, for I knew you would. <laughs> and now I'll laugh and cackle all, <laughs> for my magic spell has worked well, and they're both as dead as a mackerel. <laughs> Not so, O oh, witch, for there's been a hitch in the spell that you worked so well. Mm. It will make you frown, but they did not drown. Mm -hmm. And something else you may know as well. They're steadily sailing, without even bailing, nor east by east, and steady as they go. Oh, oh curses on them. I've been tricked, but nevertheless I'm not yet licked. <laughs> I'll sit me down and plot and scheme to think up things which they'll never dream. Is that a threat? Or just a promise? Stop sassing me and wait and see what happens to Jonathan Thomas. <laughs> what happens to Jonathan Thomas? <laughs> 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 Hey, hey, hey. If this isn't really a happy day. Hurry up with the rose. For goodness knows you haven't got all day to take. I've hurried and I've worried and hustled and bustled just so you could make him awake. So hurry up and don't dawdle. And never mind all this fiddle foddle. That's what I say. And there's time for play and there's time for work. And when it's that time, you shouldn't shirk. Oh, for goodness sake, don't push me so. I'm hurrying so fast as I can go. Put the rose under his nose so he can smell it well. That's what I'm doing. But as far as I can tell, there's not even a sign of his breath. My gracious to goodness and Jimmy Cricket, he's as quiet and still as death. Oh, but he can't be dead. Because the fairy queen said, and I heard her as plain as day, put the red rose right under his nose. And then he'll wake up. Hey! He's moving his arm. It's breaking the charm. He's beginning to mutter. Oh, I'm so nervous I could stutter. I'm so upset I could fly. Jiminy crickets and gracious to goodness. Look, he's opening one eye. I think I'm going to cry. By Jove, I say. For goodness sake, he's wide awake. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Jonathan Thomas, you are wide awake. Of course I am. Of course he is. Strike me pink, what a biz. Gee whiz. Oh, my gracious. I guess I must have been asleep. For more than a week. Really, and truly? Of course. You fell off the horse. And how we did quake, because you wouldn't awake. Oh, now I remember. We were in the nightmare for it, and when I fell off the horse, I didn't have the magic acorn to keep me from falling asleep. <laughs> but now you're awake for goodness sake, and you won't go to sleep again. Who <laughs> is your uncle shit? <laughs> That's quite true. <laughs> and how do you do? None of your business. How do we do? We won't tell you. You're not very polite, <laughs> but that's quite all right. Why don't you go away? Yes, we don't you go away. I will, when I've said what I've got to say. <laughs> You're badder than bad, you, you old coffee nerves ad. And you'd better get out of here. Mm -hmm. We'll make it so hot you'll wish you had got you and your horrible sneer. You keep quiet, you walrusy one. Or you'll wish you had before I'm done. Yeah. Mm, now listen to me, you foolish three. If you go ahead, you'll all be dead. And things will be black if you don't turn back. They're not going to. Who's talking to you? Well... well and what's more, I can tell that you'll scream and yell when you meet with the things I've planned. <laughs> but if it's wisdom you lack and you don't turn back, 
You'll never reach this wee problem land. <laughs> you shut up, you old pickle face. <laughs> and go on back to your own own place. For it's truer than true. You're nothing but a nothing. You just get the stuffing knocked right out of you. Uh, I'm not afraid of your threat. And I'll get you yet. <laughs> You'll see how I keep my promise. <laughs> I'll get you. And you. And yes, even you. <laughs> and you too, little Jonathan Thomas. <laughs> yes, and you too, little Jonathan Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Why doesn't that old witch mind her own business and leave poor little Jonathan Thomas alone? What in the world do you think she'll do? I wish I knew, don't you? But we'll find out, I guess, in the next story of Jonathan Thomas and his Christmas on the Moon. So don't forget to listen, will you? My goodness, I won't. (laughs) 